The scale of the alleged chemical attack in Syria is still unfolding. Now the charity Medsans on Frontiers says more than 3,500 people were treated for the same neurotoxic symptoms, convulsions, dilated pupils and breathing problems. The British Prime Minister David Cameron and President Obama have threatened a serious response if it emerges the Assad regime are to blame. The two leaders discussed a range of options during a 40-minute telephone call and separately President Obama held a National Security Council meeting. His defense secretary commented on the discussion during a tour of Southeast Asia. President Obama has asked the Defense Department to prepare uh, options uh, for all contingencies. Uh, we have done that. And um, uh, again, uh, we are prepared to uh, exercise uh, whatever option. So what exactly are the choices before the president? Well, one possibility would be to use ships to launch strikes against key parts of President Assad's war machine. Another would be to create a no-fly zone, though that would involve airstrikes to disable air defences. The other option, which has been much discussed, is arming the rebels on a large scale. But Western powers have shied away from this recently, fearing jihadists might gain the upper hand. And as for sending in soldiers, well, that's the most unlikely. According to Syrian state TV, this footage filmed during a government-organized trip shows an underground den in a Damascus suburb, apparently belonging to rebel forces. It was filled with chemicals. On Saturday, the UN's disarmament chief, Angela Kane, arrived in Damascus to press the Syrian government to allow investigators access to the site of the alleged attack. And whilst the rebels and the government both continue to blame each other, the mass exodus out of the country continues. More than 1.7 million Syrians have become refugees. One million are children. The UN calls it a shameful milestone. Katerina Mo, BBC News.